Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Good afternoon and welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint Podcast. Uh, We're coming at you on October 2nd, 2020. Lots going on in the country right now, still a lot of COVID stuff. We're coming up on an election as well that's uh, uh, just right around the corner now from us. Um, But before we jump into any of that, I want to introduce you to our panel. On our upper left-hand corner, we have Leon Word Brathwaite, last word in Liberty, and he is a retired engineer from the state of California. Up in our uh, right-hand corner, uh, we have our Screaming Eagle of Freedom, Tim Ever, who is a pilot in the state of California. And my name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. <clears throat> um, uh, so, uh, also too, if you have any comments or questions, uh, you feel free to send them to uh, our. Uh, Email at uh, counterpoint at libertariancounterpoint.com. That'll probably come scrolling across the screen soon. Um, and, uh, you know, if you have any uh, comments on the show or anything uh, related to shutdowns uh, on riots or COVID or, uh, you know, if uh, your business was impacted, we'd love to hear about that. And we might interview you on the show in the future if you're interested. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, anyways, let's jump right into the topics now. Uh, <laughs> The news of the day, we just heard uh, last night, hot off the presses, uh, President Trump uh, has tested positive for COVID. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's funny, I was putting together the topics, and as everything with 2020, uh, every day is a new day in the news cycle. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's yes. amazing, yeah. you know, how fast the news moves. But apparently, uh, they're, uh, they had, uh, I think, uh, one of the assistants to, I think, Milani or something uh, had tested positive a few days yeah. ago, and she had been around them, and now both President and Melania Trump uh, have tested positive with COVID. All kinds of implications coming right into the election on this, and also will impact his, uh, uh, you know, style of campaigning as well, as he likes to get out there with the crowds. Uh, you guys want to jump in on this? Well, I mean, you know, you know, obviously, you first of all, you 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 pray for a speedy recovery for for the president and his, and the first lady. <clears throat> but the other people are also showing uh, positive too. Ronna Ronna McDaniel's, who is the head of the RNC, who apparently came into contact with one of them, also have tested positive already. She's um, or she's the head of the RNC, and you know, it, it does it does change a lot of things in terms of the elections. Obviously, Trump can't get out on the campaign trail because he ha- he has to go into quarantine for at least 14 days or whatever. And we only have about 32 days or so to the election. So it's, um, it's a really difficult situation. I, I'm assuming they will, they will have to go remote. Um, it probably puts Trump at a little bit of a disadvantage going into the elections. And if you believe the polls, he's running from behind. But um, it is what it is. I don't know what else, what else he, he, he can do given, given the situation. Yeah, I, I think we uh, should have, you know, good wishes and hopes and prayers for the uh, the president's recovery and and everyone that has COVID actually, yeah. um, <clears throat> along with them. Unfortunately, I, I think there are some uh, that I've seen that that seem to uh, cheer on this um, this whole. Uh, thing about him getting COVID as if he deserves it for not wearing You're masks right. often enough or something. Good, good point. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, not really knowing how he actually contracted, contacted the, the disease. Uh, uh, so uh, I think there are plenty of people that really harbor such hatred for the man, uh, which I feel is, is, um, is very uh, pitiful and, dangerous to be to allow yourself to have that level of hatred for one, of, of one other human being i mean you know okay you know i mean i'm not a big fan that's for sure and everyone knows it but uh you know i i just don't uh i try not to i mean sometimes some some people that really deserve it you know kind of get under my skin but i try not to allow that kind of negativity to enter my heart and soul it's just not good you know and so um you know that's the only thing i i I caution people to uh to to let themselves get that much uh dislike of someone that they 
you know, they could get to the point where they, you know, they wish them dead or the bad things happen to them and that kind of thing, which I, I think unfortunately is, is happening all too often today in this environment that yeah, we're all you know, stuck in. Yeah. Tim, Tim, you know, you, you raised such a very good point about that. I mean, this is one thing to disagree with Donald Trump, okay? I disagree with him on a lot of things. I mean, Jason knew about my disagreement from the many lunches we had before Trump became president. I disagree with him. I didn't even vote for him the last time, okay? But that is just a disagreement. I don't hate Trump as a human being. I disagree with him sometimes. But there are people out there, and I've seen, I mean, even there are people who I in, in contact with sending me all sorts of things about this is karma for Donald Trump because he had these poor COVID policies, blah, blah, blah. Just like you say, like if he deserves it and his wife deserves it too, I guess. And all the people are wrong, they also deserve it just because they hate Donald Trump. Yeah. I don't hate the man. I disagree with him, but I don't hate the man. And people, but the, these sort of things that we are living with in 2020 is, is, is really ripping us apart and destroying this, this great country. It really is. Well, you know, maybe maybe this can be a moment of, uh, you know, potentially a, an upbeat moment of civility. I mean, it seems like we've had incivility for the, about the last four years at least. Uh, you know, I think when, uh, when Trump uh, took office, I mean, there were literally the state plays of him being you know, in Julius Caesar's role being stabbed to death, you know, in front of yeah, the crowd. Yeah. And, you know, uh, you had, uh, you know, some celebrities, you know, holding a decapitated head of uh, Trump and other things like that. So yes. you know, we've sort of yeah. been in a, just a crazy and civil, you know, mess over the last four years. And, you know, maybe this is something that might bring some of the best. Out there. Hopefully, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to say. Certainly there's a lot of people, you know, with deranged going on and uh but uh yeah uh, one other point i wanted to make as well too you mentioned the 14 days quarantine so i think what i heard this morning is that it's 14 days quarantine for anybody who comes into contact with somebody with covid but i think what, what i heard on one of the news shows is it may only be 10 days for him uh now that he's got it and if that's the case it, it may actually uh not impact the debates as far as it goes and that's one of the next uh, topics we wanted to jump into we debate a few days ago uh, uh biden and trump had their first debate and uh it was uh it, it will be memorable <laughs> no doubt about that no doubt about that <laughs> yeah but uh you know i wanted to go away some of the takeaways that you guys might have missed opportunity and, you know quite frankly one of the questions is you know should there be more debates after that when some people are asking so i'll let you guys you know jump in on that and well, if I could just kind of clear the table uh, first, uh, I did not see the debates. Uh, in addition to not letting certain negativity come into my being, I also don't let uh, things like those debates, which I heard had a higher viewership, which just shocked me, than, than the Super Bowl. It was just the number, it broke a record with viewership. Uh, I mean, everybody like, you know, everybody slows down for a car wreck, you know, when they go by. And, uh, <laughs> it was, it was a car wreck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I heard it was. But, um, you know, <clears throat> aside from jumping on that bandwagon of, you know, it was uh, a uh, excrement show and, you know, it was a train wreck and blah, blah. I I'm wondering where was Joe Jorgensen? The, who would have been the only adult in the room. Where, where was she uh, during these debates? I heard that she made the normal requirement based on, um, based on you know, what, uh, I don't know, some parameter. I can't remember what it was, but uh, in the past, you know, if you, if you reach that level, then you should be on the debate uh, floor. But Maybe that's er erroneous too. I, again, I'm, I'm not sure, but I certainly wish, you know, are they afraid uh, of having an adult in the room? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that, that's all I have to say about that. And Leon having TVs and or access to televised uh, news and that kind of thing, which I don't and, and proud, very proud of it. I, I, I listen to enough 30 minute, 40 minute podcasts to to get myself up to speed on what's going on in the world without having to, um, 
listen to Tom Brokaw or whoever is out there. But Tom's probably gone by now. I see. That's I, I have no idea. <laughs> I just don't. I, news is is meant to strike fear in the hearts of Americans and keep them on edge and, and keep them looking for answers from the people that are giving them this this dopamine this uh, anti dopamine. Uh, uh, injection of fear and 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 uh, uh, anyway. Um, so Leon, what happened? In the- hey Tim, Tim, <laughs> real quick. I, I hate to burst your bubble too, but Walter Cronkite's also been gone for a while. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be the I'd be the I'd be the Jennings too. I'd be the Jennings too. Honestly, that. That is uh, how long it's been since I've watched, sat down and watched the news. It's been, it's been years. It's, it's probably over a decade now. And it's it's the only way I can keep some level of, <laughs> as low as it may be, of sanity left in my my brain here. It's just the only way. So anyway, but but Leon's stronger than me. And he uh, he probably can withstand the onslaught of fear and negativity coming from the mainstream news and still come out as good as he is in, in uh, mental well, thank health. Thank you for that. So let me show you. Let me remind you that I'm retired, okay? Because okay. I not only did I watch the debate while it was happening, I did watch it a second time. Okay. Oh, wow. Just to be sure. The br- Just to let you know how retired I am. <laughs> That's. Yeah, you're a glutton for punishment. <laughs> yes, yes, I guess. Well, Trump was in the debate. Trump was very aggressive, oh, from from the from the get go. He was very, very aggressive, going after Joe Biden like you would not believe. Joe Biden was, you know, heading off, you know, throwing out insults, and Trump was throwing out insults. They went back and forth. Trump had some good zingers. Joe Biden had a few. He didn't. There was a very low bar of expectations. For Joe Biden, because you know, on the on the campaign trail, it is obvious that Joe Biden is going senile. But during this debate, he sounded a little like you know he, he had it all together. Honestly, I have to say that I have to give him that. He sounded like he had it all together. But um, when I looked at it the second time, it didn't look as good as it did the first time. Now, most of the media, most of the media. As when it didn't look, when I say it didn't look, I mean Joe Biden didn't look as good as he did the first time that I watched it. Most wait, of the wait, media is saying honest, that. This- yeah. Well, I was just going to say, Leon, to be honest, uh, he sounded relatively okay compared to what we thought from this other stuff. Yes. He was interrupting him so much that he never let him go long enough to find out if he was going to be coherent. Right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, this, and this, this was one of the things that many Trump supporters have said that they didn't, he didn't, when Trump, there are some times that Trump interrupted when he should not have. He should have let Joe Biden keep on speaking, and he would have probably had one of those senior moments that we have been seeing quite a lot of on, on, on the campaign trail. But the whole thing, though, the media, though, have been reporting that this thing was a horrible thing, uh, you know, a S, S show and blah, 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 and all these other things and that. And that may be so. But if you go on YouTube and look and look at the people who looked at the, who actually looked at the debate, there are about six. 6.4 million people actually looked at the debate. You know, if you look at thumbs up versus thumb, thumbs down, it's like 10 to 1 thumbs up. People like the debate. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just, that is based upon YouTube. I know there's no science behind that, but I'm just saying based upon YouTube, thumbs up 10 times as much as thumbs down. So you have to take that with what, whatever, um, whatever grain of salt you want to take it with. But well, you know, I, was, I was happy expecting to hear the cries from the crowd, Jerry, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you're not aware who that is, Tim, that's a Jerry Springer. <laughs> that's right. It's right. <laughs> I mean, I mean, there's no doubt, there's no doubt that that was a memorable debate in terms of how it it, it went through, okay? And to be honest, I thought um, the moderator, um, Chris Wallace of Fox News, was 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 biased, okay, quite frankly, because he had some presumptions in there. Like, for instance, this critical race theory that we were speaking about. He spoke to Trump like if that is something that we should accept. If you listen to him, his question was based on the presumption that that is something that you know everybody should agree with. 
And there was another thing he, he said that was important, that obviously that because, well, he's a Democrat, but he, you know, he's not, he's not too bad a Democrat, but he's a Democrat, I know that. But he was, he was biased and I didn't like some of the questions, he, the way he, his questions that he, um, the way he was handling um, the questioning and moderating. Because at times I felt like Joe Biden was going to get into one of his senior moments and Chris Wallace, I believe, actually bailed him out of it. And that's not the job of a moderator. So anyway, I, I mean, I, I thought it was a slog fest. Both of them went at each other. I mean, I don't know if I loved it, but you know, it was, it was, it, it was an interesting experience. In, in fairness, though, to Mike Wallace, I mean, I, I did feel like Chris, some Chris of the Chris Wallace. Chris Wallace. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, Chris, Chris. Wallace. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm going back in time too. <laughs> yeah, <I'm, laughs> yeah, see, I, I, I sparked your memory back. In there you go. <laughs> yeah, but in, in fairness to Chris Wallace, uh, you know, he was um, he was very difficult, you know, keeping up with Trump. Uh, you know, from yes. almost the get go, uh, you know, Trump had his opening statement. And it was quiet for his, and then Biden had his, and for the most part, he got through it. And then at the end of it, though, Trump started interjecting at the end, and then and it never stopped after that point. And it's so true. I mean, it's true. It's true. Uh, it's true. Uh, yeah, it's very much. You know, really makes you wonder if Trump will, you know, will rehash that. One of the things that's come out, you know, as far as his strategy, uh, if, if he's going to, you know, pull back a little on that. But one of the things that came out of this as well is that they the the uh, debate. Uh, committee or whatever they are, uh, they may uh, alter the settings a little bit so somebody now can, can mute the <laughs> guy if he keeps <laughs> yeah. I don't know how that's going to play for the next one, but... Uh, well, uh, I don't think, well, I don't think that is going to happen, okay, because I, um, I don't think the Trump campaign is going to agree to that, to be honest, and both campaigns have to agree to any changes that they want to make, especially now. Both campaigns will have to agree to it. So I don't think the Trump campaign will agree to a mute button or some kind of stuff like that. And Trump already said, why would I agree to any changes when I won the, the first debate? That's what he said. So he, he think he won, so he don't want he don't want any changes to the, the format. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> that, you know, one of the things, too, that strikes the whole thing, there's a bit of incivility. I mean, you know, Trump, you know, by interjecting as much as he did and some of the things he said, you know, to Biden, were, were kind of disrespectful, but, uh, you know, Biden flat out, you know, some ad hominems, you know, calling him a racist, I think, at one yes. point. And, and a so, clown, uh, you know, a racist, yeah, yeah, a clown, and told him to shut up, man. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. shut up, man. That, that's kind of, I <laughs> think I literally wouldn't shut up. <laughs> so I kind of forgive him on that one. <laughs> but, uh, that I think uh, part of the libertarian viewpoint regarding this uh, this behavior on both their parties, uh, both parties, uh, both Trump and, and Biden, is uh, this whole notion that this high level of power that has uh, that has uh, increased uh, over the over the various um, years and, and presidents in the executive branch. Uh, where uh, Congress has abrogated their responsibilities in many areas to the executive branch. Yeah. You know, so it's not just the executive branch having taken power, it's been given power freely that belonged yeah. to the Congress. And so sure. libertarians look at the, uh, the behavior, I think, uh, or at least I do, uh, and and think to themselves, you know, these are the type of people that are attracted to this unlimited power. You know, it's this this very type of people, the type of people that, you know, that you really don't want to have that kind of power. And, you know, it, it just it smacks of this whole collectivism and this whole centralization of power in in minimal amount of people is 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 wrong it's never worked it's always been issue whether it's a monarchy or uh, some kind of dictatorship or whatever and um you know uh it, it just even this even though we we still have a semblance of a federalized republic and some some uh, semblance of a democracy to um in, within that framework, we um, we, we still we're, we're going 
slowly toward this uh, centralization of power. And, sure. and to me, it's, it's the, this debate, from what I've heard, I, I admit to not having seen it, even on YouTube, uh, it smacks of this kind of, uh, of uh, how should I say, um, this bad situation of, of attracting the wrong kind of people because there's just so much power now involved in the executive branch just well speaking cool. speaking of power and pulling a little bit of a trump interruptism here too as well yeah. <laughs> uh, to, to move us along on one other topic we need to get to was uh and a topic from the debate was uh tr president trump just nominated uh amy coney barrett to the supreme uh this is yet the third justice he will be appointing during his time if she's <clears throat> And so that was one of the topics of the debate that went back and forth. And the issue of court packing came up as well because the Democrats are not very happy that uh, Amy Comey Barrett is the uh, uh, person being nominated and the fact that it, it won't be, you know, that they're, they'll get to appoint to the next one. So, um, but anyways, I don't know if you guys had any thoughts on Amy or the Democrat threats to uh, pack the court afterwards if, uh, if she gets approved. Well, there's, there's a lot of hypocrisy. There's a lot of hypocrisy going on here, okay, on both sides, quite frankly, okay. Obama tried to put to put uh, Mary Garland on the court um, in 2016, and the Republicans objected because it was too close to the election. And now Trump is trying to do the same thing, and the Democrats objected because it's too close to the election. They both have changed. They, they, they both have changed side. I think though Trump made a very good point during the debate when he said, "Well, I'm not a. I'm not elected." For three years, I'm elected for four years, and until that four years is expired, I mean, he probably—I'm not using his exact words—until that four years is expired, I I retain all the powers of the president. You see, the whole problem here, the whole problem here that the Democrats have, and this is why they're going to try to pack the courts, is that if even if Donald Trump loses this election, and but but gets Amy Barrett on that court, he will assuming assuming no un unexpected deaths or anything like that. He will control the direction, at least he will set the direction of this country for the next 30 years because it will solidify the conservatives on the court. That's what it was going to do. It will have six solid conservatives on the court, well, maybe five and a half because John Roberts kind of wobbling these days. He, he, he seems to have a problem. I don't know what it is. But <laughs> at least, at least he's going to have five solid conservatives on the court. And, and if there are no unexpected deaths, it will set the direction for the next 30 years. The Democrats know this. They know this. And they don't want that. So that is why their whole thing now is we're going to pack the court if, if, you, if you get in Amy Barrett. But Joe Biden now, you know, Mr. Biden, he don't want to tell us if he's going to, if he support court packing or not. Oh, no, that will be a distraction. Oh, no, that will become the headline. Well, you trying to be president of the United States, bro. Tell us what you're going to do. We would like to know. Before we decide if we're going to vote for you or not, well, I've already decided I ain't voting for you. But there are a lot of people out there would like to know what you'll do before we decide to vote for you or not. But he's trying to dodge the question. Oh, we'll, oh, oh um, um, that will become the headline. Of course, it'll become the headline. We want it to become the headline. But that's a hypocrisy, you know. It's hypocrisy. Politicians and hypocrisy is the same word. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I heard. Uh just about that idea of nominating uh, in an election uh, year uh, for a Supreme Court justice. It's, it's happened some 22 or 23 times where this opportunity has arisen over the history of the United States. I yes. heard a podcast, I, I'm not sure if that's the right number, but it's been quite a few. And it's, uh, in the it's in the 20s for sure. It's in the 20s for sure. Yeah, and um, every time the sitting president has nominated someone to be on the Supreme Court. They, they may not have made it there, but right. I think often enough they did. But yes. every single time, including Obama and including right. Trump and including the next 750 presidents in the future, as far as we can, the eye can see, every time there is a situation where they have the opportunity to nominate someone to the Supreme Court to fill a vacancy in an election year, they will do it every single time, if history is any guide at all. So with that in mind, 
<laughs> maybe maybe Trump should have one of these uh, knucklehead patrol <laughs> motorcycles. <laughs> We're getting near the end of the show, though, and uh, one of the things that uh, you know we like to do is bring up something crazy that somebody has said out there in uh, public, and uh, <clears throat> this is related specifically to the Amy Comey uh, Barrett uh, appointment. Uh, but uh, after uh, she was uh, uh, approved, she gave a, a nice acceptance speech out on the White House lawn, and uh, America got to see her family. And so her family was, uh, they have seven kids, and uh, two of them are adopted. And they're actually adopted from, is it uh, the Dominican Republic? I'm, no, I'm not sure. Haiti. Oh, oh. From Haiti. Oh, from Haiti. Okay, from Haiti. Okay, and so, so these are our two, uh, two black kids. That they, uh, I guess, uh, she had, uh, uh, they had adopted them after a natural disaster that occurred in that country, and um, so it's, uh, it, you know, it seems like that should be a, a thing that's, you know, uh, that, that people think is great. But uh, apparently, uh, a noted anti-racist leader, uh, self-described leader, Abra Ibram X. Kendi, uh, <laughs> he's a director of the Center for Anti-Racist Research at Boston University. Uh, he said after uh, hearing of her appointment, some white colonizers adopted black children. They civilized these savage children in the superior ways of white people while using them as props in their uh, lifelong pictures of denial uh, while cutting the biological parents of these children out of the picture of humanity. And whether this is Barrett or not is not the point. Uh, it is a belief too many white people have if they adopt a child of color, then they can't be racist. And I mean, it's just like, wow. You know, you talk about cutting up somebody's life and by color and telling them they're racist. You're not, <laughs> it seems to me she did a wonderful thing. And, and you know, you're going to sit there and, and, you know, dice up, you know. Hey, you guys have any thoughts on that real quick? I think I think the, the I think the Ku Klux Klan is very happy with these people, you know. Seriously. <laughs> they're very happy that they are now, they are now preaching the, 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 the preachings and the sayings and the and the tenants and everything else the bible of the of the Ku Klux Klan is now coming out of the lips of these people this is their new gospel this is a new kind of racism that they think that they are so superior they can tell us who we should love and who we should not love it's no longer about the color uh, it's no longer about the content of your character which you, which Martin Luther King told us to get to it's all about the color of the skin and this is what these people are nothing about nothing but modern day members of the Ku Klux Klan. That's all they are. And what Leon said earlier about uh, what is wrong is right and what is right is wrong yes. is applicable, I think, because, uh, you know, in what other alternate universe do we complain about someone uh, adopting children? You know, and it doesn't matter if they're uh, from Asian countries or, uh, per, uh, you know, from Haiti, or especially after they, that was uh, after the hurricane, right, that they adopted these children? No, I think it was after the earthquake. There was a massive earthquake. There's a yeah. massive earthquake. I think it was after the earthquake, I think. Yeah. And, and I, I, you know, who, who knows? I, I don't pretend to know the, the exact circumstances under the, the adoption, why, you know, they were up for adoption or whatever, but it could be a myriad of reasons, including the fact that they were orphaned. I don't know. I don't, again, I don't know, but, but you know, who, 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 but somebody in the Ku Klux Klan uh, or of that mentality with that kind of racism uh, in their, in their thinking, uh, where they think that they are being anti-racist, <laughs> everything's switched and, yes. and only those kind of people can complain about some family adopting children in, in, fr from a ravaged uh, nation. Yeah. Not only ravaged by hurricanes, but ravaged by the Jones Act. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I mean, that's the kind of craziness we're dealing with nowadays with uh, people focusing on race exclusively. But that said, yeah. we're out of time. And uh, thanks right. so much for joining us. And you can catch us at uh, thelibertarianfacebook.com or libertariancounterpoint.com or I think the Libertarian Express. Uh, so anyways, uh, thanks for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you.